regression. And to start off, we're going to go with a historical example or what was a motivating interest to people who were developing the ideas of correlation and regression and do with the heights of parents and heights of children, among other um, physical characteristics. Uh, so there's a picture of two basketball players, Muggsy Bogues and Manute Bowl. Uh, Manute Bowl, uh, pictured there on the left, uh, was seven feet seven inches tall. Um, how tall would we expect his children to be, not knowing anything else? Or if we want to keep it within the same um, sort of uh, sex, how tall would we expect his sons to be, uh, not knowing anything else? What would we think? Very tall. At least six feet. At least six feet. Maybe seven feet. As tall as Manufo? <laughs> no takers? <laughs> Maybe there's a biological issue. Anyone with not as tall? I can't take anyone to say as tall. Any, so anyone taller than Manufo? We guess his son? No takers? Yeah. I feel like when you're seven seven, maybe there's some really hard genetic trait that's directed that. So maybe that's coming. Okay. Uh, two adult children. Uh, bowl bowl is seven foot two. Oh. My new bowl is six foot nine. Okay. Another version of this. My father was five feet two inches tall. How tall would you expect me to be? A little bit taller than that? Around the same. Anyone want to say shorter than that? It's pretty close, right? <laughs> I'm a little bit taller, but what would you expect? No one would expect shorter than five feet two? We've seen this picture before. This is a, one of the first scatter plots uh, created. And this is the, one of the phenomena that Galton, among others, was investigating, which had to do with looking at um, scatter plots and relationships among the heights of parents and the heights of children. I'm trying to understand these relationships and characteristics. And it was in these contexts that the techniques of correlation and regression analyses were invented. Well, another way to say it is it was within these contexts that the phenomenon of regression to the mean was discovered. What are we talking about with this phenomenon in terms of regression? The phenomenon is that the prediction is closer to the mean. Uh, so here's a, a little bit more modern take on the, the sort of thing that Galton was studying. Here along the horizontal axis we have father's height uh, measured in centimeters and along the vertical axis is the child's height. And there's a scatter plot there. So there are data points that correspond to how tall is the parent, how tall is the child, and so on. And there are two lines plotted there. The line in black is the regression line. It's the line that minimizes the sum of squared errors. The line in red is the line of equality. Right? It's when y equals x. The line with slope 1 and intercept 0. So dots along this line are situations where the child is exactly the same height as the parent. Dots above the red line are where the child is taller. Dots below the red line is where the child is smaller. The red line is equal height, parent and child. So if we were to think about, well, I would expect the child to be exactly as tall as the parent, the red line would be our prediction line. So far, so good? It's not our prediction line. The regression line is here, is different than the line of equality. Visually, it's a little flatter, not as tilted. The slope is a little bit smaller. 
Does everyone see that visually? That the regression line is not the line of equality here. What does that mean? It means at any point along the horizontal axis for any uh, value of the x variable, we have a prediction, and that's given by the regression line in black. And the prediction is always closer to the average than what the parent height is. Everyone see that? That the, the line is not the line of equality, it's flatter. Our predictions are therefore going to be more in the moderate range. For someone with a very low value on the x variable, sure, we predict them relatively low, but not as low. They're predicted to be higher than what they were on the x. And for someone with a very large, uh, high value on the x variable, sure, we predict them to be pretty high, but not as high as they were on x here. <coughs> Just to concentrate that more specifically to this context, among the tallest fathers in this data set, well, they tend to have children who are pretty tall too, but not as tall as the fathers. Like my new Foles children. Pretty tall, but not as tall as the fathers. The shortest fathers, they're predicted to have children who are also tend to be shorter but not as short as they were. That's the case with me and my father. I'm a little bit taller than my father. And this is indeed what our intuitions told us about these predictions. When we talked about the new pole, we said, oh, I think his sons are probably going to be pretty tall, but nobody really said they'd be as or taller than the new pole. Same thing with my father. When you, heard, when you learned that he was five foot two, Nobody said that I would be five foot two or shorter. You all expected a little bit taller. It's exactly how it plays out. It's exactly what the regression line captures. Yes. I have a question. Um, I'm trying to this relate to any type around the time that some of these studies were initially being done changes in nutrition. Uh, so for a while, kind of, the average was getting slightly taller. And so I'm wondering what that, I mean, maybe it wouldn't be as noticeable from, you know, parent to child, but maybe grandparent to child. And if there's a way to measure that, or if there's a way to also include both parents. Sure. Um, and, and Galton's work actually did involve uh, both parents derived what's called the mid parents. So we took both parents and did a little scaling because the expectation was that women were a little bit shorter than men on average to try to average them out in a, in a certain way. The point about uh, a sort of the um, generational factors or things like nutrition or other maybe health or other things that would contribute to height of, of humans. Um, certainly there are uh, factors that affect human height. Uh, I don't know enough about it to know whether it works um, dramatically on a single generation change. I'd expect it much more over many generations. Um, and more to the point, it would affect the mean. You might say, well look, all of these children, their average height tends to be a little bit taller than the average height of their parents. Hey, it looks like as a population on average, we're all getting, not, we're not all getting a little taller, but uh, on average we're getting taller. That's a separate issue then. What would you predict for the tallest amongst us? For the tallest amongst us, we would still predict them to be a little bit more moderate than, than just that. In terms of the lines, if there was a big mean shift, like on average children are taller, that's going to influence the intercept. Hey, just as a baseline, everyone seems, not everyone, but on average, we're a bit taller. That's different than the, the slope. So we see this phenomenon in this little context here. What would we think about tall parents? They're probably going to have tall children, but unlikely to be as tall as the tall. 
Same thing for the shorter parents. They're more likely to have shorter children on average than the rest of the children, but not as short as they are. That is, our prediction would be that they would regress to the mean. That is, get a little bit more closer to the average from both extremes. There's another way to think of this phenomenon in terms of variation. Variation in data and variation in prediction. So here's the same scatter plot with the regression line. I got rid of the other line. Um, and now I want you to focus on the variation. So from the shortest to the tallest uh, father, we got a range of 44 centimeters. And I don't even know what the range of the actual children is. That's not what I want to focus on. What I want to focus on is the range of predictions. So look at the shortest father and what would we predict for them in terms of the, their child type. And the tallest father, what would we predict for their child type? What is the range of predictions? 30 centimeters. There's some amount of variability in the father's height. Based on regression, what would we predict? That is, the predictions themselves have a little bit less variability. Does everyone see that? 30 being less than 44 here. Sorry, what was 44 again? 44 is the range from the shortest to the tallest father. And given the regression analysis, making prediction for everyone, what is the range of the predictions? It's only 30 centimeters. So our predictions are not as extreme. They are restricted or tugged in more towards the middle. Yeah, for those really tall fathers, yeah, we'll predict the kid's pretty tall, but not as tall. We're going to pull the prediction back to the middle a little bit. For the really short fathers, we're going to predict the kid's going to be fairly short, but not as short. Our prediction sort of pulls them up a little bit closer to the middle. This phenomenon, that our predictions from regression are not as extreme or are tugged towards the middle, that we all express when we ask about the height of Manute Bowles children or the height of my father's uh, children, is a phenomenon of make a prediction a little bit closer to the average. This is the phenomenon of regression to the mean. I think the clearest way to understand this statistically is through the standardized solution to a regression equation. Here's an example we developed when we were first learning about correlation and regression. I got scores from 20 people um, taking a couple of tests. Uh, there's summary statistics. There's a good, strong correlation here, 0.91. The variable on x tells me a lot about the, variable on, the value of the variable on y. If I put in the regression equation, there it is in the unstandardized form, I can make predictions. You tell me somebody has a score of 8 um, on the x variable, according to the line, I'd predict a score of 7.93 on the y variable. If you tell me somebody has a score of 2 on the x variable, I predict a score of about 2.57 on the y variable. We've seen how this regression equation works before. But I want to turn to the standardized solution to highlight that this is a regression line. Regress towards the mean. Move towards the mean. Let me pick on these same scores again. Here's somebody who has an 8 on the x variable. What is that in a standardized metric? 0.85. This person's x variable value is above the mean. The z-score is positive. How far above the mean? 0.85 standard deviations above the mean. What do we predict for them? In the unstandardized metric, we predict for them a 7.93. In the standardized metric, that's a 0.77. 
They're above average on X. We have a positive relationship. So we predict them to be above average on Y, but not as far above. On X, they're 0.85 standard deviations above the mean. Our prediction for them is that they're only going to be 0.77 standard deviations above the mean. Yeah, we'll predict they're above average in terms of their score on the Y variable, but not as far above that. Same phenomenon down, down here for the lower scores. Somebody who has a score of two on the X variable, they are 1.19 standard deviations below the mean. That's what the Z-score of negative 1.19 indicates. So what do we predict for them? In the unstandardized metric, that's 2.57. In the standardized metric, that corresponds to negative 1.08. Negative, again, indicating that we predict they'd be below the mean. So somebody is 1.19 standard deviations below the mean on X, what do we predict for them on Y? That they'll be about 1.08 standard deviations below the mean on Y. Below average on X, predict they're going to be below average on Y, but not as far below. Instead of saying we expect them to be 1.19 standard deviations below the mean on Y, we're saying according to our model, We'd only expect them to be 1.08 standard deviations below the mean. Below the mean. Does this mean that a regression line is necessarily a line of best fit? It's not like the best fit of the data is about making predictions? It is the best fit. The regression line is the best fit by our criterion, which is make the sum of squared errors as small as they can be. For every data point, you can look at the vertical distance to the line. That's the error. Square them, add them all up. This line makes that total as small as possible. Uh, okay. So by that criterion, it is the best line. And so when we're talking about regression line, we're talking about it's actually the OLS that's doing this, that's making it really like that's accounting for regression mean. Yes, we are using OLS. If we were to use another estimation routine, like the generalized least squares or maximum likelihood, I hope we'll have time to get to in our course or others, we'd actually wind up with pretty much the same line. Okay. We'd have to use a very wonky estimation criterion to come up with anything wildly different in this case. How does this work if you're, because in the, in the two examples that we've talked about so far, it's height and test scores. The predictor and the outcome are sort of the same general variable, right? They're both tests at different times, or they're both height. How does this work sort of if your two variables aren't really the same thing, it's just that one predicts the other? Hold that question for one moment. Okay. Why does this happen? And that will explain okay. what are the conditions under which this happens. So two things to keep straight. One is, what is regression to the mean? It's the phenomenon that our predictions, based on regression, are not as extreme as the values that they come from, in some sense. That our predictions are always go back a little bit more towards the middle. That is captured in this case, by the correlation. This correlation is pretty high, to 0.91. That's not one. If the correlation were one, or negative one, then there would be no phenomenon of regression. Think about it like the parent's height and the child's height. If the correlation were perfect, were 1.0, then we would not do any kind of predict more moderate. We would say, if I know the parent's height, the child's height is going to be exactly the same. I know it with certainty. The phenomenon of regression toward the mean, this regression, make predictions that are more moderate, happens when the correlation is less than one in magnitude. And then to answer the question, it always happens when the correlation is less than one in magnitude. So this was discovered in the kind of heights of parents, heights of children, hey, height is the same variable context, but it applies more generally. If you tell me you've got two variables that are correlated, and you're gonna use one to predict the other, and the correlation is not perfect, 
that is not 1.0 or negative 1.0, this phenomenon is going to happen. I don't care what the two variables are. Yes? Can you think about this also in terms of um, training, like um, variables, you know, if you had like test one, you know, at 11 versus if it was seven? Then what are you saying? Like a regression, like the amount being large. The like amount of regression? Like, yes. Yeah, let's. Yes, you can think of it that way. That is indeed the case. Let me scoot back to. Uh, say this picture. Okay. At the mean of the x variable, the regression line is also the mean of the y variable. That's one of the properties of regression. Okay. So someone who's at the mean on x, we predict for them the mean on y. There's actually no kind of movement towards the middle. The further away we get on x, from the middle, the more there's a kind of tug down towards the middle. And that's one way to think about it is these lines kind of cross in the middle and then they diverge from each other. So it conceptually, the more extreme the data point is, the more kind of a regression to the mean phenomenon we would have. You mentioned the non-black line there was a line of quality. Yeah. And, and what is that? That's, in this case, it's when would the height of the child be exactly equal to the height of the parent? Okay. So no change at all. By seeing that our regression line is more tilted, what we're saying is, yeah, for the shorter fathers, predict their kids to be a little bit taller than they are. For the taller fathers, predict their kids to be a little bit shorter than they are, which is exactly what we all said about Manu Bolin and my father. 